Hello everyone and welcome to Halloween Scrooge. Um, hold on, let me take a sip of water. This is a Halloween game, so like, it's nearly Halloween, guys. But not a lie, it's like a month away. But like, come on, it's Halloween season. Um, yeah, this is a short, like I don't know, <laughs> wait, game about Halloween. I don't even know what it's about. So let's just play. Ooh, let's make it full screen first. Um, this is hell. What's hell? But this is like the, okay, okay. Okay. Um, how, let me. Okay. First, turn down the music a little bit. And let's start, guys. Let me bring Mielza out. And because we can't have. There's a costume. There's my copy, actually, no. Can I bring out. There's Nick as well. Nick is, will be joining us because he's spooky. Um, yeah, let's go. Oh, what do you want to see? Simply put. Okay. This is my name, Prospero. Hi, great name, Prospero. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Ooh, this is this is a bit spooky, a bit creepy. Let me bring my yeah. There you go. Um, October thirtieth. It's almost evening. By the time the movers finish getting everything off the truck and into my new home, sure, I've got no family or friends here, but it's a fresh start and a new a great opportunity. All that matters is that after four hours, hundred kilometers, and an expensive moving bill, I'm here in Ravenville. Ready to start my new life. So we're moving, okay. Is it- Oh. Is it expecting too much to think I might even find someone special in the, si in the city? Maybe I should accept my ex- <laughs> I can't read. Maybe I should set my expectations low for now. What the- what the fuck? I stand on the driveway as a truck pulls away and taking the sight of my new neighborhood while there's still sunlight. It was this is so good. It's like a bungalow house, I think. Like a two-story house. It's so cute. The street, is the street is almost silent. The only sounds to be heard are the occasional call of a solitary raven and the rustle of the wind in the treetops. Well, the leaves are slow to change colour this year, but otherwise the scene looks stunningly picturesque. I've been here to view the house, of course. That was months ago, and I hadn't realised at the time how passionate my soon to be neighbours were about holidays, or Halloween at least. Decor lanterns, rich statues, and fake cobwebs cob adorn every, uh, almost every lawn and roof. The neighbors next door have a pu massive plastic salad. Guys, guys, I can't do this. <laughs> Is there no like? Okay, I can't. I can't change it. Okay, we just have to do it well. Towering over the house, one arm raised as if to raise us hello. This is the skeleton. It makes my house look pretty plain in comparison. Also, we live in this bungalow house, but I don't really feel like getting into spirit of it all. Standing here, looking at these elaborate displays of frankly obsession towards this holiday, we need to realize that Halloween just isn't for someone like me. It's for my friends, facing their couples' costumes and their costumes. Children's costume as they experience the holiday for the first time. Why do the rest of us need to play along? A cold breeze chills me and I and I snap out my sparring self pity. Right, I've got my own place and a new job lined up. What am I even complaining about? I mean, it's fair. Being lonely is a bit sad, right? I mean, but like, being single is not the worst. Not the worst, guys. <laughs> I mean, I, I think some people prefer it, actually. <laughs> and it's like, pausing for a second in the doorway. The lingering doubt is nagging at me. Maybe I should at least... Maybe I should still make a trip to the store to get candy and decorations for tomorrow. At the very least, it would make a good impression on my, on my neighbours. Nah, screw paper, brusher. Sure. I'm just going to skip Halloween this year. Buy yourself no decorations, no candy. I've only just moved in anyway. Give me a break. Yeah, I mean, that's fair. I think people will understand later that night. Woo, this is so cute. Books, knock. Oh, knock. I wake up a start at the sound of the door. A sound of a knock at the door. It takes me a second to make sense of my surroundings, and I remember that I fell asleep on the couch. I glance at my phone and tells me... Uh, a glance at my phone tells me it's just past midnight. What could be so important at this hour? Well, it is Devil's Night. Might just be some troublesome kids trying to prank their new neighbor. I wouldn't be surprised if they already egged my house too. Okay, calm. Calm down. I'm getting there. Looking grows a little more impatient. Ruling out, out any chance of this just being kids playing Ding Dong Ditch. What should I do? What do I look like? A horror for that movie for that? I'm not opening the door. Get up and check who it is. Let's just check. I should probably check who that is. It might be a emergency. I get up from the couch and make my way to the door quietly, leaning in to look for the people. I usually clad figure standing on my porch, waiting for me to answer the door. I don't know why he's here, but I don't feel comfortable talking to, speaking to some strange man past midnight. And well, he doesn't look like he's desperate for help. I'm sure he can go to the next house. I turn away from the door silently so he won't hear my footsteps. What the fuck? What the fuck? What the fuck? To my to my shock. Um, the man, the man materializes, materializes in front of me, seemingly out of thin air. The frown on his handsome face giving away this displeasure. 
Oh fuck, sorry. Okay. I know the situation is really scary, but it does it, it doesn't fear that paralyzed me in shock. He appeared it almost as it seemed as the temperature dropped a few degrees in the room. And yet looking at him makes me feel warm. Maybe it's his bright orange hair and cloak. Maybe it's the scent of all the crushed fall leaf, pumpkin and cinnamon that comes accompanies him. Or maybe it's just my exhaustion sparking these crazy thoughts. So it's like it's like the Christmas carol. What? How long were you gonna keep me waiting out there? Uh, forever. I don't remember inviting you in. How do you get in my house? Who, who even are you? What does it look like? I'm Jack, the ghost of Halloween history. <laughs> okay. I'm pretty sure it's supposed to be a Christmas pass, and that doesn't really answer the question of how he appeared in front of me. Never mind that. How'd you get in here? Did you even hear me? I said I'm a ghost. Do you need a second demonstration or something? Lovely. I just got an angry ghost in my room now. <laughs> Yo, I assume really glance around myself for my cell phone, just in case. Why are you getting mad at me? You're the one who barged in here in the middle of the night. You know how scary it is for some random dude to prove, in my a- prove into my house at the midnight claiming to be a ghost? Jack sighs and begrudgingly admits my point, I think. You're right. I apologize, Prospero. I didn't mean to keep angry at you. It's been a lengthy night for me. How does he know my name? Is he a stalker or something? <laughs> um, he, I don't... He seems... Uh, uh, why is he in my house? That's just... Yeah. Great. Now, can you please leave? I'm going to call the cops. It's far and deepened, and he stares at me like I'm some misbehaving child who's getting on his last on his nerves. You don't believe me, do you? I'm only logical. I'm sure my godliness had me imagining things when I saw him fade in here. There's no way a witness was real. Listen, I don't believe in ghosts. I don't know I don't know what you want, but you can't just come inside someone's house if they don't answer the door. I mainly assess my exit exi- 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 in case I need to escape. Then look again carefully. What? I'm caref- I'm carefully looking. Sure enough, he fades away, becoming gradually translucent before appear- disappearing entirely. The room he materializes about 10 seconds later. Do you believe me now? But the first time we've since we met, he smiles. It's a much better look on him than this per- perpetual scowl. I mean, I guess we don't have a choice, but I just moved here. Are you sure you, you don't have the wrong person? I'm here for you, Pespero, because you do- you started to dislike Halloween. You were, plan- you were just planning to turn off your lights and skip it this year, weren't you? That's all? What do you mean that's all? I mean, I'm sure there are thousands of people feeling dis- disenfranchised with Halloween this- each year. I never heard of anyone getting a visit from a fancy ghost because of it. Jack sighs. Look, I don't get to choose who I visit. The list of names is given to me. It will be visited by three ghosts tonight, me, myself, and two others. Um, I guess that explains why- What's with the paper crown? Wait, what is- What, what is with the paper crown? Is it, is it because he wants to look like a pumpkin? Uh, I guess that, really, that explains why you already seem to know who I am. I was given a lot of information about you, yes. So, you know that I'm a single. <laughs> so, this isn't a dating game. Aw, too bad. Aw. What's with the people crown anyway? As I said, I'm the spirit of Halloween history. My role is to protect the memories that children make of Halloween. Children call me the king of pumpkins. The crown became a symbol. Aw, so cute. What does it have to do with me? I'm not a child. You ask far too many questions. Okay, no more questions. You have no more questions as it going. I, have no, I don't have all night. But I'm in my pajamas. Relax, you'll be in spirit form. No one will see you anyway. Before I have a chance to protest, my surroundings fade to black. Okay! Oh, ooh, this is so cute! The next thing I know, we're standing in the middle of a classroom, full of noisy pat- children, no older than four and five. Four to five. Four and five. <laughs> Most of them are seated in the chi- Is this okay volume? Okay. Maybe I'll quiet down a little bit, hold on. Not that, sorry, 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 sorry. That doesn't mean press that, perhaps? Yeah, that's better, right? Sorry, I don't know if I was too loud before. Most of them are seated in their tiny chairs around tables covered in juice boxes and sna- snack-laden paper plates. The summit of chips, gummies, and Halloween-themed candy they're eating makes me nostalgic for these little school parties we hold to celebrate upcoming holidays. Oh, this is so cute! I feel out of place and self-conscious, but the kids didn't seem to listen to us. Jack did say we would be invisible, and he did tell the boys they like mas- magic. I should just trust him. Recognize this place? Am I supposed to? You don't remember your kindergarten class? I guess you're older than you look. I ignore his like. Wait, this is my kindergarten class? Is that Ang? Um, but wait, hold it. Wait. Is a cowboy, a princess, a witch? Oh, this is so cute. Oh my god. This is so cute. I ignore his lighthearted teasing and glance around the small room at the costume children. Almost all the kids are dressed up in the usual assortment of popular costumes, princesses, cowboys, and pirates. My gaze wanders to the children playing in the carpet, and I spot a more usual. It's more unusual get up that immediately makes me smile. I think I see my kids self over there, behind, beside the story, con- story corner easel. <laughs> I'm the one to catch up. I don't. I never like ketchup, so I'm gonna be just like a cup of soda. Is that me? That's that. Is that me? Jack moves aside, looking in the direction of my pointed finger to a pair of kids at the back of the classroom. 
One is just as, as comically large to the cup. Yeah, that was me, alright. I know everybody can see my face. It's the one that could see if you're just cussing my holes. Aww. Can't say I've ever seen a costume like that for children. It looks professional quality, like a mascot or something. My god made, me for, made it for me. She used to be a costume designer for theatre. I took advantage of that to great effect, clearly. That's cute. Thank you. Oh! Uh, is there no option to say thank you? <laughs> um, I guess... Yep. Cute! Is it, um, okay. Sorry guys, I need to check the endings. I don't know how many endings there are. Okay, it's, it's, it's a linear storyline, so there's multiple dialogue choices though. Let's let's just let's just say it. I what? Are you making fun of me? No way, I'm serious, you're cute. I meant to, so I'm not making you uncomfortable though. No you're not, I'm just not used to <laughs> sorry. <laughs> okay, never mind, let's move on. He closes this way oakily, putting my gaze as he composes himself. You. Aww! This is so cute, this is so cute, sorry. He quickly changes the topic before I can ask anything else. Do you, even, do you ever miss this? I mean, the Halloween pizza party. Sorry. Halloween pizza parties and the school costume parades. Do you ever wish you could go back and relive, relive Halloween as a kid? No, I didn't really celebrate Halloween as a kid. I didn't, I didn't really celebrate, like, things. <laughs> I never really thought about it. I love Halloween as a kid, though. It's a drag my parents trick or treating across three neighborhoods every year. Well, really? I've never done that. And I could go out by myself. Most year it was so cold by the end of October that I had to wear the coat over my costume anyway. But somehow that disappointment of overshadowed the fun, overshadowed, overshadowed the fun and excitement of it all. Even though the nostalgia for the decorations of the classroom fills me a happy warmth. I never had this. The job is to is to is to help people remember their good Halloween memories or something, something like that. Yeah, it's vaguely adjusting his cloak. Instead of autumn leaves and cinnamon teasing me again, I get distracted for a second. I love his little cloak thing. It actually looks really cool. You said your job is to make sh sure children's memories of Halloween stay joyful. So you were listening when I was talking earlier. I level a frown at him, and he just finally decides to elaborate. Fine, fine. I'll stop racing before time. You're pre you're game you're pretty close to getting it right though. People tend to selectively remember good times even without my interference. You heard of those rose colored rose colored glasses, of course. And sure, there are a lot of crappy things that can happen to a kid on Halloween. Maybe you catch a cold and can't go out one year, or it rains, or snows. Maybe you only get only get candy you hate, oh god forbid, apples and healthy snacks. I mean, I never had that. <laughs> I went, I went off once or twice, but it was too... No one really did it in my um, neighborhood, so we didn't have that much candy. And then I just decided not to try. Because <laughs> no one would give me candy. <laughs> nope. I've definitely had my fair share of those years. Dentists and teachers were the worst offenders for healthy treats. I mean, I wouldn't mind that. <laughs> All those uh, things are earth-shattering tragedies to a game, so you expect them to overshadow your, ha overshadow your happy moments of a bad impression of Halloween overall, right? I nod. But it's simply good memories have a lot of power. You remember how heavy your back felt when you hold her home stuffed with candy? How excited it was to have a mountain of mystery treats to sort through? I never had that. <laughs> you remember the thrill of trick or treating without your parents for the first time? Never had that. And the thrill of staying out with your friends until curfew on Halloween night? Never had that. So while I suppress the bad memories, I also make sure you don't lose the ones that made your childhood fun, that you made your Halloween nights fun. Sorry, I don't know why I, I'm, I don't know why I made him sound like that. Like when he's like he's judging me. <laughs> I'm not of an ex explanation for a moment, trying to think of an answer more genuine and I respect it cool. This explanation doesn't make any sense in a world where science exists. On the other hand, I'm literally in my childhood classroom right now, in my pajamas, with a handsome ghost beside me. There must be some room for fantastical powers to uh, be at play. That I'm still dreaming. I think about pinching myself to check. One of the drawings pinned on the board clutches my eyes and I gasp in delight. Jack raises a crescenting eyebrow at me, but I already crossed the small classroom, rushing too proudly to a piece in question. Oh! Look at this, I'm sure this one is mine. Jack leans in beside me to examine the drawing I pointed to him amongst all the others on the wall. They're all drawings of, drawings of Pumpkin Jack. I guess it was a class assignment. Well, I want you to little ask this. Ah! It's nowhere near as handsome as the real thing, though. I seem to have caught him off guard with that comment. Suddenly, self aware of how close we are, he moves away a little. Um, well, anyway, um, it might not be that well known, but my name isn't spelled with a C. It's just Jack. J A C K. J A K. I can't help but laugh at this obvious attempt to change the subject. Didn't seem to be hate being flirted with though. I keep that in mind for future fan art, thanks. What? Wait, what do you mean future fan art? <laughs> I don't know what I mean. <laughs> Yo, I can't, I can't read. At so, a uh, moment, a small voice pops up from beside us. Hey, mister. We both look down to see a girl, a small girl in a private costume, gazing up at Jack with big bright eyes. She's grinning from ear to ear. I shoot a jock, Jack a panic, glancing glare, only to get a slight shrug in response. You couldn't, right? This girl can see us. Maybe she can see him. I like your costume, are you the Pumpkin King? 
I am. That's a very nice co pirate costume you're wearing. I'm not a pirate. I'm a pirate. Captain! I sit full of snort, snort, snort laugh at the image of the shiny child schooling an overworldly spirit. She looks me for the first time. Her eye, bright eyes analyzing me pensively. Why are you in pajamas? Are you just about someone going to sleep? My jaw practically drops on a glance at Jack, who smiles briefly at me in response. Before she could even further ruin my dignity, the, this girl is probably called away by her friend. She doesn't even seem to notice her talking to the two weird strangers in the classroom. I sense a slight relief in Jack at his tender event. Oh, in other words, he waved me one gloved hand in a soft circle gesture and transporting us away. The children in the classroom disappear and we're back in my living room. I thought you could know it said no one could see us in spirit form. What was that? How can you deal with some kids out there with spiritual and supernatural sight? You have what? Was there a kid in like that in my kindergarten class back then? I don't remember anyone weird. It's nothing that special. It's more common than you think. You know the kids who have imaginary friends are sound a little too real. We're just able to see spirits and ghosts. Oh, well, that's terrifying, and I never want to think about that again. <laughs> I'm usually warning about these cases in advance, but it looks like the paperwork was incomplete this time. I'm going to rate this experience 2 out of 5. Who is your manager? I'm filing a complaint. Easy, Karen. I'm not sure you want to meet my manager. I mean, we see that he went along with a joke, but they've got Karen's in the ghost with too. Depressing. In any case, that sums up the, my time with Utah and I put Sparrow. So I can't read myself. <laughs> he follows this for a moment if, as if he was considering what to say next. Take care. With the other two visitors. Why? You can't just say that kind of thing without elaborating. You'll see for yourself. I have to leave now, though. I hope you can see each other again. <laughs> Particularly, he flushes as a response. If I'm ever visiting again like this, that means I failed my task here, so I hope there's no need for that. I raised one. I don't know why I raised one eyebrow that answer and he backtracks quickly. Not because I don't want to see you again. I mean, it's not like that. Okay. I can't hold my grin in the back anymore. I can't hold my back. My, oh my god, I can't read. I can't hold back my grin anymore. And his brows furrow in the frustration of the sight. Uh, stop enjoying this. I can't help it. It's too fun. He sighs. And I think I see the tiniest hint of a smile tucking on his lips. Good night, Miss Farrow. Good night. <laughs> bye bye. Bye bye. Who's the next guy? Uh, past. No, present, right? And just like that, I'm alone in my living room again. That wasn't so bad, I guess. I was wishing a glimpse of my childhood through the lens of adulthood. Adulthood. I'm not sure how it's supposed to convince me. How I was supposed to convince me that I can still enjoy Halloween now, though. I plop down on the couch and absolutely look around the room. If I can't say when the next visitor should, would be here, am I supposed to get to sleep? If this was a Christmas carol, carol I'll have a fancy, gran fancy grandfather clock ominously trying to announce each arrival, but it's not, so I check my time on the phone. It's almost 1 a.m. Oh, that was rhythmic. Da -da 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 -da. Looks like I don't have to wait long after all. Whoever's knocking is clearly in good spirits. Ah, spirits. The lock is more like a song that I'm here. I cross the fire and open the door directly to sight without checking the people. It's not like I can avoid meeting them after all. Hello? What's up? The man's- You have a really cool coat. Holy shit. The man standing on my doorstep is dressed in a skeleton hoodie and a clear plastic jacket. And his face lights up when he sees me. Oh? Then they tell me there'll be someone so cute on my list today. I close the door. <laughs> <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Laughing, he faces through the closed door. There's a barely any room between us and the entrance way, and I take a step back inst instinctively. Come on, never really had that. Don't tell me I was boring as that pumpkin head. You just surprised me. It didn't strike me as a, a ghost. He interrupts me and closes a space between us, grabbing one of my hands before I can take another step back. Wait, his hand is solid? He just walked through my door after I closed it. Maybe I'm not a ghost. He raises my hand to his lips as if to kiss it. Okay, he's a, he, okay. You're a bit okay. His strikingly crimson colored eyes fixated on my face. I can pull my hand away at any time, but his eyes almost have um, of her own most hypnotizing gaze grasp on me. So I my hand faces through his fingers as if they were just air and drops to my side. Or maybe I am. He goes with TVC on me. Well, all I can do is shake my ha myself out of the sudden silence. I had to admit it, but that was kind of attractive. <laughs> so you're going to tell me your name before you continue on hearing me? What's the rest of Sparrow? We're playing our time to get to know each other. Don't worry. Okay, this guy is completely different from Jack. Makes me a little concerned about what kind of wild card my third visitor will be. I'm Ender, the ghost of Halloween happiness, or Henderism if you prefer. You can't spell Enderism without Ender after all. That is incredibly cheesy. Alright, Mr. Ender Skeleton. What wisdom are you here to impart? Wait, Henderism? What does Henderism mean? Is it like happiness? It's just happiness, right? But like, I thought it would be like past history, wait, past, present, future. So, I mean, present, present would be kind of hard to do. I'm not here to impart anything. We're just gonna have fun, yeah. He uses it in his pocket and hands me a wrapped lollipop. I don't like lollipops, I'm sorry. I hide it questioningly and he, the smile disappears from his face, replaced by a half frown, half pout. It's just candy, I promise. 
Just loads of someone to buy my hesitance, but still holds it out to me expectantly. Jack must have told you I'm some kind of monster or something, huh? Not sick in the mud prince. This doesn't know how to this doesn't this doesn't know how to have a good time. Oh he didn't really. It's just common sense not to take food from strangers, isn't it? Especially when they're not humans. No offense. Well I'm taken. I'm not here to hurt you, you know. And I'm not as boring as the other two either. I'd take the candy to appease him, but I'm not planning to eat it. If anyone is offended by my hesitancy's trust him, he doesn't he doesn't show it. He snaps his fingers and the ribbon room disappears. I blink and we're transported we've been transported to Where? Ooh! Ta-da! We're in the midst of a busy fairground? No, that's not right. It's the front lawn of a grand mansion. It suddenly fooled me on the first sight. There are carnival booths and prize fields all over the grass and along the right head driveway are leading head leading to the huge illuminated house on the hill. The low hum of carnival music plays in the background, accompanied by the chatter of low voices and sounds of carnival games. Welcome to the Bumpkin Bash, Evan Hall's grandest event. The biggest party in the city, Evan never once invited goes, human spirits, you name it. You just have to be the, you just, uh, you just have to be in the know to get in. You get VIP, VIP access tonight because you're with me. I look around at the E4 forms passing us by, by us and then at the booths. The humans mingling with them, and I think the humans don't seem betrayed at all. But somebody just like, apparently just like Halloween, you choose a very ha love, Halloween loving time to move to, you know? Ravenville has all supernatural roots. I guess that explains why I met so many cute ghosts here so far. He gives a small laugh at my turn to slay him. I have to try harder than that. Oh my god. I have to try harder than that to get a blush out of me for Sparrow. I'm not Jack. Damn. Aw. <laughs> Yo, what is this like my side mission? Ender gently grabs my forearm and moves me out of the way of a huge lumberjack in my path. Go for now. I know there's a lot to look at, but you're going to get yourself away in this crowd. Why did the win? Of course. But I your hands so warm. I thought ghosts were supposed to be a uh, cold or something. Well, hmm. Well, even if we call ourselves ghosts, we're technically better referred to as fairies or fairy spirits. Oh, I guess that explains your ears too. I thought it would be rude to ask. Yeah, but not technically human. Enough for the boring law questions though. You're my guest tonight, so enjoy yourself. And, and let's check out party. <laughs> Wait, huh? Do you have a job to do? This is my job. The job is to bring me to a party, but aren't you supposed to be teaching me some grand lesson or something? He sighs deeply and frowns at me, crossing his arms. Job this, job that. I can see I didn't explain this properly. Go ahead, get all your questions out. Who for this party? My boss, this, that's his mansion on the hill actually, Raven Court Manor. He throws parties for every major holiday, but Halloween is the best one, obviously. Does he know you hang out here when you're supposed to be visiting people? What, are you going to stitch on me? Just wondering. He doesn't care as long as I get, he gets results, which I'm exceptional, exceptional, exceptional at delivering, since everyone has a great time with me. How's it going, amazing job? It's great, isn't it? I mean, like, look like I'm sucking off, but I'm a spirit of Halloween hinduism, like I said. My Jack preserves memories of childhood Halloween. I'm more involved with preserving the love of Halloween into our adulthood. Ducky Halloween, Ducky Core, costume parties, which is in public events, arms, all of that. So part of this, so part of that is showing people they can have a good time on Halloween as an adult. Exactly. Oh, sorry, I'll stop asking questions now. Great, let's check out the party run. Oh my god, I can't read. Oh my god, guys. Great, let's check out the party then. Lead the way. For a while, we wander around the crowded fair, set up in a mode, man alone, playing games of different booths, each manned by a uniform staff member donning a pumpkin head. Ooh! And then a skill that keeping me entertained. Enough that I don't have the time to think about whether all, this, all of this is real or just a dream. Or why he has such a completely fun job. Maybe been boasting earlier, but he really is enjoyable to be around. The, the booth staff all cheerfully recognize him, but it doesn't stop there. Every so often, party goes stop to greet him, spirits and costume humans alike. He seems to be very popular. He never stops, keeps me racing along, though. Always positively blushing off people, off to, well, uh, off, to tell them he's occupied, occupied before presenting attention to me. Because despite his joking around, he takes his job seriously after all. We stand by the creepy mask booth when someone calls of, else calls over to Undo. Hi! A stuffed in a figure bear costume walks up to us. Have you been in? Great party. The boss shouldn't have them. He does, doesn't he? The bear timidly gestures to me, a widow in pajamas. Who's this with you? And the eyes shift my way, his lips forming a knowing smile as he waits for me to respond. I can see that he's curious about how I'll answer. What should I say? <laughs> <laughs> we held hostages in my feet because of Halloween. Uh, on his date? No, I don't want to say that, guys. <laughs> I want to say that. Yeah, why not, guys? Why not? It's clear that answers are lighted, or very li at least amused in though. I don't know. I, I don't know if you guys plan to enter the uh, costume copies, couples costume contest. Well, that happens. That's happening in a bit. I don't have a costume on. Oh, they're doing that again, huh? Yeah, you and your date could enter. You make a nice looking couple. Maybe do. I'm always down for some friendly competition. Think about it. I hope to see you guys there. But I don't have a costume. 
Monsieur is bad waves and saunters off, leaving Ender and I alone again. He turns in May River Room again. Oh, so, how about so how about it? Let's enter, just for fun. We don't have costumes, I'm only in my pajamas, remember? I remember a little painfully that I've been running around this party of spirits seeing folks from in nothing more than my PJs. Ugh. Let me hand the costumes, I've got just a thing. And then looks at me in effortlessly, 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 effortlessly charming manner of his, and he snaps his fingers. I see. Wait, what? Oh, ooh! Okay, there's a DJ. Ooh, cool, cool, cool. <laughs> you look amazing. What do you think? The first, the best, the first thing I see is Ender dressed as a hamburger, complete with an adorable olive berry. It's amazing. But I'm also keenly aware that I'm wearing <laughs> something new over my pajamas. I look down to see myself just as a comically large server, so it's out the way. And the grins at me. You like it? Me match. Do you base this off my childhood costume? I thought you might appreciate that. I hope it's not creepy or anything. I love it. I'm glad you like it. I'll say the costume was such a fun idea. I'm, so, I'm happy that someone appreciates it. I finally take a moment to survey the room he teleported us to, which looks like it's in a man on the hill. A few guests mingle with... with while costume waiters move between them, offering up drinks and Halloween themed appetizers, the dude in the corner is busy choosing from the set his set list, and there aren't many people dancing. Are we in the, the mansion? We are. The costume mechanics is held, held here. We could have just walked, walked. It's like it was like ten steps away. What fun is that? Fair enough. I'm beginning to sense a theme with him. Well, stay for the judging. Then I have to take you home, Sparrow. Um, that's right. I must forgotten what this whole night has been about. Jack and Ender were pretty nice, all things considered. However, the third. Guess what ghosts will be like. Just then I spot, spot a familiar purple finger striding towards us. Hi hey, you two, I'm so glad you decided to enter. You look great. I love this little bear. I love the design of the bear. But at least even you know. I don't play games and there are prizes involved. Oh, prizes. They forgot to tell Pospera. The boss gives away a crate of his prize gala apples to the costume con contest winners. Oh, nice. Oh, nice. And I can have those since he's so determined to win. Not a monster. Of course I'll show them with you. Somehow. He gains a mysterious smile and I wonder what he means by that. We were interrupted by the sound of someone announcing the contest entrance should head to the back of the room to be judged. Good luck, Ender. I hope you're in your date, Ren. Aww. The judges examine our costume with amusement. Isn't it clear that they like hand Ender's handiwork? Or maybe they just like Ender. While we wait for the results for our judging, he introduces me, introduces me to the other guests that have come to greet him with him and come with our costumes. I met three vampires, a sorceress, and a plumber from down the street. I can't help but marvel at the variety of people Ender and a plumber. In the center of attention. Is it weird? No, I just never had friends who are social brutalizing like you. He looks like he wants to say something, but stops himself and just smiles. Huh? Hey, they're about to announce the windows. Windows, let's go. He grabs my hand and leads me through a minor crowd that has gathered to see the silly co couple costume entries. There are only a few entries, but they're not a match for Ender's handiwork. And it just is announced every winners, which is the light of the room. Go, go after Ender, I'm sure, oh, don't I'm sure you win every year. He doesn't. Huh? And this bare fist. Ben and a friend slips through the crowd to join us. Hey, wait, don't. Ender never enters a copy couple's costume, costume contest with anyone. I always try to get him to, to but this is the first time he's green. I can hear the amused delight in the bear's voice. He seems to have to tell Pessoa that. Ender, are you brushing? Shut up, I'm not. He doesn't fish away from me at the moment, but I've already seen it. Oh, too bad I've in one day. I all thanks to you, Pessoa. I hope you guys had a good time. And that grim isn't too mean to do. Can you tell me more about this grim person? Oh, no time, unfortunately. You have to meet him yourself. That's too bad. Good night, then, Pessoa. Good night. A big goodbye, goodnight to the friendly bear, and Ender stops his fingers, transporting us back to the street outside my house. Why are we outside? Fuck! He's trying to be back, standing on my porch as if nothing happened. No costumes, no crowd, no music. Only sound of crickets on the empty street. I actually feel a little sad that it's over. Moving to a new thing alone with my friends has been lonely. I didn't want to miss it, admit it now. Well, here we are. It's been a lot of fun for Sparrow. I hope you thought so too. It's time to say goodbye. Oh, can you stay a little longer? Oh, are you inviting me in? Wait, I might have not thought this through. That's a tempting offer, but it's a little too spicy for this game. Thanks for the invite, though. I mean, like that. Sure, you didn't, Pesparo. He knows too much. <laughs> anyway, I'll make, I'll make sure you get your share of girl gala apples. I hope you can trust girls now, enough now to, to eat them. You'll guiltily, I remember the only thing little pop still in my pocket. Alright, so I hope I'm judging you for being non-human at all. That wasn't cool of me. It's all good. If you have fun tonight, I'll succeed in. So then said night um, before Grim gets mad at me for keeping him waiting. Bye, Ender. Good night and happy Halloween, Pesparo. Happy Halloween! Oh, it's not even Halloween yet, but I'm so excited. I watch him vanish into nothingness, and then remember with a sword that I'm inside. I'll say my locked house. Ender, what the hell? I tried to dumb door knob anyway, but sure enough, it's definitely locked, so I left it. I should be really the cause, but, th but this is pretty bad. Am I supposed to break into my own home on the first day of moving into the neighborhood? Maybe that third ghost shows up, he can't. Before I continue my thought, I hear the sound 
of the door unlocked from the other side. But someone was scarier than being locked out. I stepped back, but the, but the door opens to reveal no one there. The lights are on, just like I left at them, though. Everything about the situation says you're about to be murdered by get murdered. You're about to be murdered by a stranger, but this might cannot can't get any there, can it? I timidly step in the foyer and scan the living room for the safety of the doorway. Hi! Oh, you're so cool. I met with the sight of a man so beautiful, I accidentally gasped. He's here nonchalantly on the couch, my couch, <laughs> leaning back against the cushions, arms crossed. And it was like kind of normal. And there was kind of normal looking in the street, right? And Jack was dressed a little fancier than that. But this man is adorned a head to toe in gilded clothes, with matching gold jewelry and epaulets. Epaulets? His flowing black coat seems to shimmer in a dim night light. I've never seen anything like it. The stranger rises from his spot and belatedly, belatedly noticed a peculiar option at least holding. A green red side with matching gold accents. It all clicks at once. Guess what? Nick, it's your, it's your cousin! <laughs> oh my god! Nick, Nick. Alright, hold on. Nick. He's the... Look. Look, 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 can you see, can you see him? That's my cousin, right? What, what? What's that, what's that, Nick? You're not even related to him? You don't even know who that Scythe is? Ah. Um. You sh you'll be great friends, Nick, right? Oh, you, you still don't know him? Okay. Okay. Grim, as in the Grim Reaper. Damn, that's right. That, that was the third ghost in the Christmas Carol. He wasn't, he hasn't said anything yet. And I begin to wonder if he's going to be silent the entire time like the spirit did not tell. I particularly dashed when he mutters something quietly in his breath. Of all the houses he'd be assigned to, really. He eyes me coldly. Okay, hi. <laughs> I can't help but feeling a bit little offended. I mean, gee, sorry I was late to the supernatural appointment. Blame Endo, not me. Are you uh, here to kill me or, collect my or to collect my soul or something? He stares at me for a moment. And his gaze so intense that, he feels, uh, f that I feel like he's looking right through me. What, made, what would you make possibly make you think that? He leans against his side as if to mock me. Now I can inspect pulling at his lips. I consider my, I consider my, uh, I consider my answer carefully. I don't want to offend him like I did the others. Actually, the best course of action here is just to change, change the topic entirely. Anyway, I was just taking him back about how pretty you are. Well, no, no reaction. I guess he's a few, a man of few words. Are you trying, really trying to flip with me right now? Okay, plan to offend him has failed. Tell me, Mr. Are you even, are you really even afraid of me? Or well, somebody supposedly concerned about our safety? You spent long enough googling me. Oh no, he noticed. I'm sorry. It was certainly a compliment. He seems to evaluate my apology. I don't know what reactions you expect to get from me, but please refrain and just let me do my job. I don't get paid to entertain your flirting. Well, if you're not here to collect my soul, I am assume you're, you're here to show me how to read in the future. Grim simply snorts. He raises a hand and the living room fades away. Ooh, so cute. I thought we'd be going well somewhat more interesting than this, but no, it's just a street outside my house. Something is different though. I saw on, that, on in every house, almost every house, even mine. The street is filled with children in costumes carrying bo small buckets and pillowcases filled with candy, laughing as they walk with friends and parents. Luckily, the other houses have seen them all decorated, just as, a, just as they were when I was outside this afternoon. Is this the future? Doesn't look so bad to me. Observe, a Halloween present. Present? But I thought you were a ghost of Halloween future. This sent me contemplatively, and I get a sense I, sh I should shut up. We've met Jack, the ghost of Halloween history, and ended the ghost of Halloween hatevism. As for me, my, ro my role is to herald the future of Halloween, Halloween included. He moves beside me, gesturing to the lovely, lively scene in front of us. The present Halloween is thriving. Like other holidays, which se people seem to be capitalistic, materialistic events, Halloween has been safe from our perception. perception. The perception shifts, and there's, a, and there's a feel that corporations are just trying to sell you a holiday. People begin to become jaded with it. The decline of the hol holiday accelerates. Yeah, that's tough. that happens a lot, bro. I know there's no more. No with decorations, people turn the lights off. Kids gradually stop seeing the point of going out. And going out. After all, no one's giving candy anymore. That's what happened in my neighborhood. Eventually, there's no one celebrating at all. When that happens, people have nothing to look forward to anymore. Children lose another staple of their childhoods and grow up without an important nostalgia. Jack found a job, no more parties for Ando to keep the spirit alive amongst adults. They grow into old age and have no interest in carrying that on, on the tradition. Eh, carrying on the tradition. The holiday retires to myth. Yada yada, you get the point. So what do you want me to do about all this? I'm gonna keep to stopping it, the chosen one. I'll get him hopefully, but he avoids my gaze, eventually beginning to laugh that he's obviously been struggling to hold in. Damn it, I wasn't going to answer you, but that question was absurd. What, you think you're main character of a game or something? I am. Rude, what if I am? No, there's nothing to be done. I'm here to foretell the future. I'm a hold of the Halloween future. So I can't actually change anything. You're just one person. But you can change your own life if that's what you want. You can enjoy the holiday instead of staying miserable. <laughs> 
Yeah, I would be less miserable if I could spend it with you. You don't give up, do you? Hey, I've got to try. Not so true, though. Do I shoot your shot in it? <laughs> he raises his hand and teleports us back to my living room. Well, that's about all. You're kidding, I was so sure. He fans at me. I realize he was not kidding at all. It seems like this portion of the field trip is less useful to me personally than the other part, two parts. He just shrugs, completely and bothered by my, by my complaints. Take it up with someone else. I came, I did my job, I'm clocking out. Isn't there something else you can show me? Like my future and my soulmate, lost, tomorrow's lottery numbers? Do they see how you die? What? No, I'm good, thanks. Can't help you then. I say, I'm sure enough that this is a smile from him finally. What do you need to see? You've seen all there is. It's up to you. It's up to you what you do with this information. I forgot to see your smile one more time. Got him. What? That's it? And with that, he vanishes. But instead of having time to process everything that just happened, I feel an like overwhelming sense of exhaustion that come over me. I didn't have time to make it to the couch before my legs give way beneath me. My eyes were filtering shut as I give into sleep. Oh, okay. Let's awaken. Let's awaken. Let's awaken. I open my eyes against the morning sunlight, gradually taking note of my surroundings while my brain makes up. I'm still like couching my pajamas. The unpacked boxes are right where I left them yesterday, and there isn't a good sense light. I sit up and stretch lightly, feeling a strange soreness in my muscles I can only attribute to house moving pains. It's like you can, it's not like you can get and wake up from a dream, no matter how crazy it is, right? The memories come rushing, flashing back to me. The sights, sounds, smells. It was fun, I admit. But did I enjoy the night because of my spectral company, or did I enjoy it because deep down I still like Halloween after all? The question brings a smile to my face, and by then I've already excited, decided. Might as well hold on to a good Halloween vibe while I release another year. If I get bored of it, I'll get another visit next year, won't I? I get up and I find one of my clothing, one of my clothing boxes, searching for something to change into so I can head to the store. In the process, something falls from near falls out my pajama pants. One wrap lollipop. That's weird. I examine the candy carefully, but it looks normal enough. If the man of the human guests were, were real, was real, I guess it makes sense as this too. May be a terrible idea, but I wrap it and hesitantly put it in my mouth. Huh? It's like organic candy to me. I check to myself, thinking nothing of it, as I grab my keys from the foyer and open the front door. Another unusual sight greets me on the porch. One basket of beautiful gala apples, but with a fixed note read, read, <laughs> reading, Welcome to the neighborhood, and a tiny heart. Aww! I, at this point, I'm tempted to spit this, lo this lollipop out. Clearly, it's making me hallucinate. This is way too weird to be real. I pick up the basket and glance down the street to the other houses, just in case this has been some elaborate prank set up, set, someone set up to me to welcome me to the neighborhood. Maybe they all heard it nearby, watching my reaction. That would be far more likely than the alternative, which is that ghosts are real, time travel is possible, teleportation exists. Well, if it is a prank, the culprit is nowhere in sight. There's just an old man tending to his garden and a couple do doors down and a stray cat running across the street. <gasps> Pet the cat! I place the apples in the holy cabinet and I return to my task. Even for the store, at least that will get my mind out of all this weirdness. I return with two bags full of Halloween decor and plenty of candy for the neighborhood kids. And as I grab the things out of the trunk of my car, my neighbors, the ones with giant skeleton, open the door. I practically drop everything I'm holding. Hi! <laughs> what? what are you doing here? Good morning. An orange-haired man, a bright-eyed man with many piercings, and another tall, elegant man in a long co coat emerge from the house. The orange man smiles, but there's a shyness to him. The elegant one only gives me a passing glance. It's the right-haired one who greets me enthusiastically. I've been the apples, like in the neighborhood. I'm not dreaming, right? But even these three look. But even though these three look just like them, they don't have the pointed ears or the face paint on the clothes. And they don't tease. Wait, so it is you? Jack gives me a warm smile. Why don't we help you decorate, Pesero? Yes. And that's the story of my first time meeting in Ravenville. Aww! Thank you for playing! Credits! Oh, credits, guys! Hello, the developer Van Day V23. Oh! Follow at Hamlin Hour on Twitter for behind the scenes slash development updates. Hamlin's an hour. Composer main many theme Melia Keys. Beta readers Ravenville Ma Mayor, Ravenville Gardener, Vera Chelsea. Additional music care for music, sound effects, sonus.com, dustplot.com. Additional code history, code snippet, scrolling credits code. Nice! Wait, what is it about? It was developed for, by Vanity for Spooktober 3 and the ja Game Jam 2021. A demo comprising 30% of the game was released for the Jam Jam download. Then I know fucking released it. Okay. So this is for Halloween! The first visual novel and first solo project. I created all the assets with the story and programmed into the game myself. Oh, this is the first game? This is so cool! Well done! This is made by Ryan B. This is, so, this is such a good, cool game. Oh, it was amazing! I love the storyline. Um, it was so cool. I love the little options you can get. <laughs> you can uh, or, like you can just say stuff like it's so. It was so funny. Um, I love the uh, um. This is such a adorable game. I don't know what else to say. Um, yeah, it was just really cool. 
If that makes sense. I, I, I don't know. <laughs> so, hold on. I, uh, I, uh, I love the art. Okay. Say goodbye to me, Oh my god, this is so weird in this outfit. Say goodbye to me, and goodbye, goodbye.